For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Calling all Cougar fans, set sail with Jimmer, Coach Sitake, and a host of BYU legends on cruising with the Cougs in April of 2025. The entire cruise ship, all BYU fans, and all BYU entertainment. Reserve your cabin today at BYUcruise.com. That's BYUcruise.com. Boston Mabia stays on the hill for BYU. Top four and 6-4 the score. Baylor leading BYU. Bears were cruising, leading 6-0. Until a four-run third and all the production coming with two outs for the Cougs. In the bottom of the third. 1-0 to Wesley Jordan. Fouls it off home plate. 1-1 one one the count. To the Baylor left fielder, Wesley Jordan. Three-run home run in the first and an RBI single in the second. His first four RBIs of this series. He came into today one for ten in the series, but two for two with a run and four RBI today. One ball, one strike to Wesley Jordan. First batter of the fourth. Grounds it. Foul down the third baseline. Jordan was the uh, Bears would be last out in the ninth inning last night. Grounded to third. And a low throw from Easton Jones and E5 allowed Jordan to reach and score the game tying run in the ninth. Fouls it to the backstop one and two. The count stays. A heartbreaker last night as they scored two. Did the Bears with the last one scoring on the Jordan reach on an E5 and then four in the tenth for Baylor. BYU got one to answer but lost eight to five last evening. The one two to Wesley Jordan. And the left hander Mabius away two and two. Daniel Altman is on deck. He is 0 for 2 today. Low ball 3. Count full to Jordan. Jordan's now reached base in 26 consecutive games. And reaches again. Three-run home run, single, and now base on balls to lead off the Baylor fourth. The lead batter's been aboard in three of four innings for Baylor. Daniel Altman now batting with one on and no one out here in the top of the fourth. 6-4 Bears. Hayden Kuhn lasted only an inning officially, got into the second but not out of it. Maybe he's taking Kuhn's place and Boston's gone the rest of the way here in the fourth. Ground ball to Watkins at short. Over to second for one. The throw is wide. And it'll be first and third as it gets away from Crew Robinson. On an E6. It's runners on the corners and no one out. When it might have been no one on and two out had they turned the double play. But the throw from Watkins was wide at second. Reaching on the E6 is Altman. And going first to third is Jordan. Runners on the corners and... Baylor leading 6-4, to four, looks for more as there will be a trainer attending to Wesley Jordan at third base. BYU fielding the ball much more consistently recently, but three errors last night. And the first error of the game today goes against BYU on the E6. For Brock Watkins, error number five on the year. Brock just getting back into the swing of things after missing a month due to injury. 6-4 Baylor, but... Runners on first and third. No one out here in the fourth with Hunter Toplanski. The only Baylor player in the starting batting order without a hit this weekend. Toplanski's 0 for 9 with two bases on balls. One coming in the second inning of this game. He's 0 for 10 with a strikeout in the first. I should say 0 for 10 is Toplanski with two bases on balls. Won this game. They've seen what they needed to see from Wesley Jordan at third. Trainer leaves the field and Toplanski will hit righty against the lefty Mabius. Toplanski hit lefty against the righty Kuhn in the first. Switch hitter Toplanski. Takes the barrel off the shoulder but holds it back on ball one. Boston Mabius three pitch mix. Fastball in the low 90s. A curve in the high 70s and a change in the low 80s. Southpaw on the hill for BYU. Cougs trailing by two. Strike two, or strike one, pardon me, as that's a delayed call, but 
Pass ball at 90. Bites the outside edge. One ball, one strike. Cougars trailing 6 nothing. Got four in the third to make it 6-4. But now Baylor back and threatening here. Top four. With runners on the corners. Breaker misses low. Two balls and a strike. Big O Tires presents on the rubber. A look at both teams' pitching numbers. We'll get into those as this at-bat continues. Two balls and a strike to Toplansky. Swing and a miss, two and two. Baylor pitching through three. Two hits, four runs, all earned. Six strikeouts, five walks. BYU pitching through now three. Eight hits, six runs, all earned. Three strikeouts, three walks. That's on the rubber, brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. 2-2 from Mabius to Toplansky. Toplansky swings and misses. He's now 0-11 for 11 in the series. And four strikeouts, including two today. One gone for BYU defensively here in the fourth. Jordan on third, Altman on first. Jordan walking and Altman reaching on an E6. And so runners in the corners with no hits here in the fourth. Baylor for the game, six runs, eight hits, no errors. BYU, four runs, two hits, one error. Grounder to second, backhanded and off the glove of Robinson. Will allow a run to score and runners on the corners remain. As Zach Mazok. Grounds it to second, and Crew couldn't come up with it cleanly. Off the heel of his glove into center field. And a run scores. We'll see if they judge that single or base hit. But another run scores. 7-4. Baylor leads it as Jordan scores from third. Mazok on first, and Altman goes first to third on that play. So a grounder is short that was thrown away on the throw to second. And now a grounder to second that's not fielded cleanly on the backhand. And it'll be E4. Baylor last night scored two runs in the ninth without a hit, and Baylor scores a run in this inning without a hit. A walk and two errors. And errors have not been an issue for BYU lately. But in this series, they've come home to roost. A one to Cole Posey. 0-2 0-2 to Cole Posey. Called strike inside. Activity in the BYU bullpen. Carter Foss and Mason Olson getting warm. Foss, a righty, Mason a southpaw. Lefty, Boston Mabius on the hill in an 0-2 count. That's driven well to the power alley and right. And that will get down on the track. An eighth run scores. For Baylor, and it's second and third. Going first to third is Mazok. Holding it second is Posey, and scoring from third is Altman. Eight four Bears. Right as BYU got back in the game with four in the third, it's two in the uh, four in the third, two in the fourth now for Baylor to go up eight to four, and one out. And again, runners, two of them on the base paths. Posey with the double to the gap in right. A walk, two errors, and a double, producing two runs. And now second and third, one out. Top four, eight four, Baylor. RBI double for Posey. And look who's doing it again. Seven, eight, and nine hitters. Posey out of the seven spot. Tyreek Kemp now bats out of the eight hole. And he's in an 0-1 count. Two-run home run for Kemp in the second. Struck out looking in the third. Pitch missed away as it came out of the hand wrong from Boston Mabius. One ball, one strike, one out, two on. Mazok on third, Posey on second. Breaking ball just missing. Down and away. 2-1. Today's game nearly an hour and a half old, and we're just into the fourth inning. A 2-1. Barrel to center field. Center fielder back and to the track, and he'll play that off the base of the wall. Will Herdsman. One and two more score. Back-to-back doubles. Kemp with a two-bagger to straightaway center. Mazok from third. Posey from second. And the Bears are right back to it. And the back of the Baylor order 
is just raking this weekend in Provo. The 7 8 9 hitters lighting up BYU. Abe Alvarez will take a mound visit and take the ball from Boston Mavius. PZ Printing Pitching change next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Coming into today, Baylor's 7, 8, and 9 hitters have gone 11 for 22 with 9 RBI. Today, the 7, 8, 9 spots are 5 for 7 with 6 RBI. Add that up, and the back third of the Baylor order this weekend is 16 for 29 with 15 runs batted in. That is a heck of a back end. And it's 10 to 4. Baylor's hit double digit hits for the third time in three games. Baylor on the year. Double digit hits in seven of the last eight. Ten runs on ten hits. No errors. BYU four runs, two hits, two errors. A four run BYU third, followed by a four run Baylor fourth. We're still one out in the fourth. It's a PZ printing pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. And the new pitcher for BYU is Carter Foss. Carter making his 10th appearance, all out of the pen. A 7.71 ERA. Seven innings pitched, nine hits, six runs, all earned. Striking out seven, walking four. Batters hitting 321 against Foss. So BYU turns to Foss as the Cougs look to avoid a loss in a third consecutive game to the Baylor Bears. All one away, one on those account. To Cortland Castle. Cortland, the nine-hole hitter. And he is three, make it four for ten in the series with three RBI, two runs scored. Two straight balls from Foss, and Colin Reuter's going to jog on out and talk with Foss before this count gets any deeper. Baylor's been exceptional at the front end and the back end of the batting order. to Castle. Grounds it to third. Jones will handle the second for one wide. They've got a runner and a rundown between second and third. That's Kemp chasing Kemp down towards second. The tag is slapped as Kemp slides to the ground. The tag gets put on by Cooper Vest, the first baseman who's actually involved in that second to third rundown, so two out. So Kemp out in the rundown. And Castle makes his way all the way to second on the play. A foul back on the University Parkway area to Enzo Apodaca with two gone here in the top of the fourth. Apodaca fouls to the screen. two to Apodaca Castle on second and that'll be a base hit to right sharply on a one hopper to Luke Anderson comes up firing the play will be cut off and scoring run number 11 is Cortland Castle Castle with the grounder to Jones that began that rundown reaching on a fielder's choice was Castle he ended up at second on the rundown play and now scores on the base hit to right for Apodaca RBI single for Enzo He's now singled in the second, third, and fourth innings. He's three for three with a walk and an RBI. And it's 11 to four, Baylor. Ninth batter in the inning is Ty Johnson. Baylor brought nine to the plate in the second and nine in the fourth. 11 to four the score. And that'll be another base hit to the gap in right on the ground, rolling all the way to the wall. Coming around third to score is Enzo Apodaca. Holding it second will be Ty Johnson. 
And the Bears have batted around here in the fourth. 12 to 4, 12 runs on 12 hits. Apodaca scores all the way from first. Ty Johnson with the RBI double. This inning began with a walk of Wesley Jordan. Altman reaching on an E6, a strikeout, another error, allowing a batter to reach. Double, double, fielder's choice, single and double. Equates to six runs across here in the fourth. 12-4 Bears. Wesley Jordan, 10th batter in the inning, and he barrels that to left field. That will be off the wall. Scoring from second will be Johnson. Sliding into second is Jordan. The hits keep on coming, and the runs too. 13 runs on 13 hits. Wesley Jordan is now 3-for-3 three three with 5 RBI today. RBI double for Jordan. It's coming from everywhere on this Baylor roster. Johnson scores on the Jordan double. Back-to-back-to-back to back to back base hits. Apodaca single, Johnson double, Jordan double. Altman now bats for the second time in this inning. Batter number 11 of the fourth. Still two gone, one on. That's Jordan on second. Altman today. Flight out to left in the first, reaching on a fielder's choice in the second, reaching on an E6 and scoring a run earlier in this inning. 12, a 13-4, Baylor. The Cougars got back into this game in the bottom of the third with a four-run third, making it 6-4. to four. Baylor answers with seven in the top of the fourth. And that's the biggest inning of the year this year for Baylor. They had seven against Oral Roberts, seven against Stephen F. Austin, now seven against BYU. 2-1, meantime, the count to Daniel Altman. RBIs in the inning from Jordan, Johnson, Apodaca, Posey, and two RBI from Kemp. One run scored on an error. No RBI on the play. 2-1 to Altman from Carter Foss. Misses with a fastball down and in. 3-1. and one. Eleventh batter in the inning. A five-pitch walk of Altman, first and second. Four consecutive batters reach. Single, double, double, base on balls. Thirteen, four bears. A sunny day and a gloomy outlook for BYU this afternoon. As it goes 1-0 to Hunter Toplansky, the 12th batter of this inning. Toplansky is 0-2 for with a walk, has struck out twice. He's the only Baylor player in the batting order without a hit this weekend. Everyone else but Toplansky is striping it. He's the last guy to be involved. 0-4-11 with four strikeouts on the weekend. The 2-0 to Toplansky. There's his hit. Opposite field. To left. Coming around third and scoring is Jordan. Going to third is Altman. And it's runners on the corners and still two out. Hunter Toplansky gets his first hit of the weekend. He's now 1 for 12. It's an RBI single. It's 14 to 4 as Carter Foss struggles in his relief stint. 13th batter of the inning is Zach Mazok. He's 0 for 2 today with a ground out of strikeout and reaching on an E4 earlier in this inning and scoring. It's now an 8-run inning. This is the highest scoring inning of any inning all year for Baylor. 8 runs across here in the 4th. Runners on the corners. A number. English's foul up the first baseline. Altman on 3rd to Plansky on 1st. Said Hunter Toplansky was the only guy without a hit in this batting order, and he got his hit after going 0 for 11 to open the series. Now 1 for 12 with an RBI. My scorebook is into the fifth inning, but we're still in the fourth. As 13 batters 
come to the plate for Baylor in a 14-4 ball game and 1-1 the count from Kuhn to Mazok. Mazok the DH. One for six in the series. Make it one for seven. Pardon me, one for seven is Mazok. Just missing with a pitch on the outside edge is Foss for two and one. Candon Daly is warming up. Mason Olsen was warming the southpaw. Breaking ball, just missing. Low, three and one. Hayden Kuhn gave up six earned runs in one inning of work to get this game underway for BYU. That stripe back up the middle. And scoring from third will be Altman. First and second on another base hit. Mazok with a single and an RBI single at that. And so for Baylor, since a fielder's choice from Cortland Castle that precipitated a rundown that got BYU second out, it's been a single, a double, a double, a walk, a single, a single, more runs crossed, and now 15-4 to four our score, nine runs in the inning. Carter Foss's relief appearance ends, and we'll take a 60-second break for another PZ printing pitching change on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, my scorebook is a... Uh, it's a mural, it's a melange, it's a mixture of symbols and scratches and underlines and circles and, well, it's been a 14 batter inning for Baylor in a 15-4 to ball game. We're still only in the fourth inning. Nine runs so far across for Baylor here in the fourth. And the 14th batter will be Cole Posey. New pitcher for BYU on a PZ Printing pitching change is Candon Daly. It's brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Candon making his 14th appearance. Has made two starts on the year. He's 2-2, two two, 5.06 ERA. Has gone 21 in the third, giving up 26 hits. 15 runs, 12 of them earned. 18 strikeouts, 14 walks. Batters hitting 306 against him. He's given up six extra base hits among his 26 hits on the year. Three doubles, a triple, and two home runs. First battery faces is Cole Posey. Posey is two for three today with two doubles and an RBI. And takes ball one. Fourteen batters here in the fourth. Posey, earlier in this inning, had a double and an RBI. Drove from the fourth run of this inning. Nine runs have scored in the inning. Called strike one and one. 6-0 six, six ball game through two. BYU made it 6-4 after three. Then a nine-run fourth so far for Baylor. 15-4, our score of 15 runs on 15 hits for the Bears. Four runs on two hits for BYU. And Posey turns on that and grounds it right to the third base coach, Jim Blair. Six consecutive batters reaching safely. And 10 have actually gotten to first base if you include errors and fielders' choices. 10 in a row, that is. All kinds of base path traffic. The 1 2. A grounder to Jones. Well handled. Will this be the third out? It will. The Cougars get out of the fourth inning on the 5 3 by Posey. But for Baylor, nine runs in the fourth inning on 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hits. Nine runs, seven hits. There was an error involved, two errors involved. And two left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Baylor 15, BYU 4, our score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, 15 to 4 is our score. We're still relatively early in this game. Bottom four is all. By the way, the... uh, Big 12 run rule is in effect on getaway days. Games three of series. If a team is ahead by 10 runs or more after seven, the game is declared over. And it's an 11-run lead for Baylor right now in the bottom of the fourth. A nine-run top of the inning for the Bears. Baylor now 15 runs on 15 hits. And the 15 hits allowed tie for the most allowed by BYU in a game. And they've allowed it in just four innings. Rough, rough day so far for the Cougs as we open the bottom of the fourth and 
Brock Watkins. Bats against Colin McKinney, who's gone all the way. And he's uh, had a long route. Nope, they've uh, changed pitchers. We should note that McKinney's day is done. And so McKinney went through three. Fouling it back is Watkins. New pitcher is R.J. Rue. And Watkins is going to get a base hit to right field. One hopper to right to get this inning underway. So Brock Watkins has his first hit of the series. Now one for eight. Crew Robinson batting out of the nine hole. Brock and Crew each batting for only the second time today. And there have been Baylor players with four plate appearances, four and five plate appearances. Four plate appearances at least through four. Yeah, Apodaca's batted four times, so have a bunch of Baylor players already. Robinson batting for the second time. Struck out swinging in the third. 0-1 to Crew. 0-2 to Crew is swinging a miss on the off speed. RJ Rue, the southpaw, is on the hill. The 0-2 to Robinson. 0-3 was a swinging strikeout. Three pitches. Robinson down on strikes for the second time today. So one gone for the top of the order, Luke Anderson. He struck out swinging twice as well. Fastball slider curve and change from Rue is the book. Favors the fastball that he throws at 86 to 89. So not overwhelming velocity. Grounded foul by Luke. Handled by third base coach Adam Law. Tyler Coolbaugh at first. R.J. Rue making his 12th appearance. Has made two starts on the year. His record is 1-0. 5.21 ERA coming into the day. Batter sitting 297 off of Rue. The 0-1 with one out, one on. Bottom four. In on the fists and Luke swings and misses. Luke is 2-for-12 in the series. And has struck out six times. Batting 288. His average dipping over the last couple of weeks. The 0-2. Down and in. A miss for ball one. Luke was hitting a 350 four weeks ago. He's now down to 288. That'll boost his average a little bit. Base hit to right, rounding second. And getting the third is Watkins. So runners on the corners now with one out. Base hit for Luke Anderson. Third hit of the series. Three for 13 now is Luke. And the Cougars looking to rally again here. Trailing 6-0. BYU scored four in the third. Baylor plates nine in the fourth. Top of the inning. We're now bottom four. And the Cougs have first and third. One out for Riker Scow. BYU trailing by 11. 15-4 is our score. You can hear the wind in our diamond microphone as the wind blows out to center. And strike one taken by Riker Scow. Scow, an injury replacement for Keone Painter, who walked in the first and then the pickoff attempt jammed his hand, diving back. A liner to first, a touch of the bag to get one out, and now they've got Anderson at a rundown between first and second. He's tagged out, and that is an unconventional double play to end the fourth for BYU. A line shot to first. It was not handled cleanly by Posey. Took it off the ground, put the ball to the bag, and then had Anderson in a rundown, and that gets BYU out of the fourth with no runs across. So for BYU, no runs on two hits, no errors, and one left aboard. We go top five, 15-4 Baylor on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the fifth here at Miller Park, 15-4 to four, Baylor. Baylor score three in the first, three in the second, nine in the fourth. A season-high nine-run inning for the Bears. BYU scoreless in the first and the second. Scored four in the third to get back in it, but held scoreless in the fourth. 
An unconventional double play to end the last half inning. A line out turning into a 3-6-3 DP. And here we are at top five. Tyreek Kemp will lead things off for the Bears. Kemp is two for three today with four RBI. Two extra base hits. He struck out once. He's in a 2-0 count from Candon Daly. Daly, the fourth BYU pitcher used today. Kuhn, Mabius, Foss, and Daly. We're top five. Not yet halfway home in this one. And this game is almost two hours old. So pacing for a long one. It could be made a short one if this does get run ruled. And again, a run of uh, lead of 10 or more after 7, and the game is over. Right now it's an 11-run Baylor lead as a call strike with a fastball outside. Gets it into a 2-2 two and two count on Tyreek Kemp, the shortstop. Base hit right up the middle, lasered past Daly. And the Bears lead off the 5th with their 16th hit of the day. Their season high in hits is 18 last weekend against Incarnate Word. Their season high in runs is 17 against Stephen F. Austin, so they're in season high territory. BYU's now allowed 16 hits in the game for the first time this year. Most runs allowed has been tied. UVU also scored 15. So the next run, if Baylor gets one, will be a new season high in runs allowed by BYU. Already a season high in hits against. No one out runner on first is Kemp for Cortland Castle. Castle pops up. Brock Watkins, Crew Robinson. Robinson will call for it behind second to make the catch. One gone. So Enzo Apodaca will now bat for the fifth time already here in the fifth inning. A walk, a single, a single, and an RBI single. So he's three for three with a walk, two runs scored, and an RBI. And now seven hits on the weekend. Seven for 13 for Apodaca. And drills that in the air. High and deep to right center and gone. Two run home run. 17 to four. Baylor. Apodaca with his fourth hit of the day. Three RBIs on the day. A two-run shot to the power alley in right. Apodaca goes yard for the fourth time this year. Tenth of his career. And Baylor pouring it on 17-4. to four. He scores Kemp from first. And nothing but crooked numbers for Baylor when they score. Three in the first. Three in the second. Nine in the fourth. Already two now in the fifth as Ty Johnson bats. Three RBI day for Apudaka, four in the series. We're top five. Ty Johnson. Two for four today with two runs scored and an RBI. RBI double in the fourth. He bats now in the fifth. One one the count. Two and one on a called strike. Fastball bites the lower outside edge. One ball, two strikes, two. Ty Johnson, one gone, bases clear. And 17-4, Baylor leading BYU top five. Foul tip back to the padding. Stays one and two. So 17 runs allowed by BYU is a new season high. UVU 15. And a loss here back on March 25th, 15-11. It's now 17-4. Again, foul to the backstop. One and two. Season highs and hits allowed and runs allowed in this game. 17 runs, 17 hits for the Baylor Bears. In hindsight, last night was the game you got to get, right? Got away from BYU in the ninth. It's been all Baylor in the first and third games of the series. That's a strikeout. Swinging and missing is Ty Johnson, second out of the inning. And a strikeout for Candon Daly. And now bring up Wesley Jordan. Two gone, no one on. 17-4 Bears. Bears 17 runs, 17 hits. BYU four runs, four hits. Wesley Jordan. 
Takes ball one. Three-run home run for Jordan in the first. RBI single in the second. Walked and scored in the fourth. And then later in the inning, an RBI double. So in the fourth inning alone, he was one for one with two runs and an RBI. 2-0 to Wesley Jordan. 26-game reach streak for Jordan. A healthy hack there. No, beg your pardon. They pinch hit for Jordan. That's Fletcher. Cade Fletcher's come in in the spot of Wesley Jordan. It's Cade Fletcher batting. Fletcher was the defensive replacement and pinch hitter last night. Fletcher batting 241 on the year in a 3-1 count from Cannon Daly. So Wesley Jordan out and Cade Fletcher in in the fifth. Fletcher high and deep to left. And making the catch on the track is Riker Scow for out number three. But for Baylor, two more runs to make it 17-4. to four. We're halfway home. 17-4 Bears over the Cougs. We go bottom five next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Halfway home, 17-4 Baylor, bottom five. Easton Jones leads off the Cougar fifth. High in the air down the right field line in foul territory. And almost caught, but he overran the ball. Did Apodaca in right. So strike one. That was catchable. He was almost running too fast for that one. BYU this year has not won a game when allowing double-digit runs, 0-4. One and one, ball high. Jones today is 0 for 1. With a strikeout in the first, hit by a pitch and scored in that four-run third. After that four-run third felt like BYU was back in the game, Easton Jones hammers that to center field. And that gets out of here for a solo shot. And for Easton Jones, home run number nine on the year, 12 of the career. It's a Zions Bank home run for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. Easton Jones, solo shot to center field and 17 to 5. That's BYU's 40th home run. And of the 40 home runs, 27 have been solo. Easton Jones has nine home runs, and I think all but two or three of them have been solo shots on the year. So back to a 12-run game, and again, we note that because there's a 10-run rule in effect in the final game of three-game conference series. That's popped up by Parker Goff, who pinch hits for Colin Reuter, and flies out to center with that. So two go- uh, one gone here in the fifth. So that was Parker Goff for Colin Reuter. Pinch hitting and now taking over a catcher will be Goff. One gone with a fly out to center and now Cooper Vest. Who got BYU back in it with a three-run triple in the third. Part of a four-run third for BYU. And after getting within 6-4, it was a 9-run fourth for Baylor, a 2-run fifth, 17-4 at that point. Now 17-5 on the Jones solo shot. One gone for Vest, base is clear, bottom five. Again, conference rule on game three of three-game series. If one team leads by 10 or more after seven complete, it's a run-ruled game, and it's final. Grounded foul down the first baseline, one and two to Vest. And so it's a 12-run lead. With the 10 run rule in effect, the Cougars have two more, at least two more innings at bat. To find at least two more runs. If Baylor's held scoreless, that is. Baylor's begun to make some substitutions in this game. And so too BYU. Two and two the count to Vest. Coop batting 252 on the year. 
And one for one today with a walk in that triple. That's in tight. Count full to BYU's first baseman. BYU being out hit 17 to 5 right now. The Cougs are 1 and 14 on the year when being out hit. They walked best, so BYU doing its best to make Baylor work for its win. Jones with a solo home run to lead off the fifth. Parker Goff pinch hitting for Colin Reuter flied out to center. Vest now walks for Cujillo Aloy. Aloy walked in the second and doubled home Cooper Vest in the third. Take strike one. Fastball lower part of the frame from R.G. Rue. That was an 89 mile per hour fastball for number 89, Rue. One and one. Rue is through one and a third, has given up three hits, one run, it was earned. Striking out one, walking one. Low and away ball two. Baylor is tied at season high in runs with 17. They had that against uh, Stephen F. Austin. And they're one hit away from a season high in hits, 18 against Incarnate Word. Foul ball to the backstop. Today's game is two hours and two minutes old. And we're just barely at the halfway mark. That is, unless it gets run ruled, which is a possibility, 2-2. Vest leads off first. Rue from the stretch, winds and fires. Handcuffed Cujillo and strikes him out. So Cujillo who swings and misses, and it's at two gone for Breiker Herdsman. Breiker today is 0 for 2, grounding into a 6-4-3 DP and striking out swinging. BYU and Utah Tech are on tap for Monday night here. And it's Oklahoma in town next weekend, then Utah... The following Tuesday before the Cougs head back out on the road to Oklahoma State. Breaking ball fouled out of play down the right field line. 0 one to Herdsman. Baylor playing its third of four consecutive away games. They'll be at UT Arlington uh, next Tuesday. Fouled out of play again down the right side. 0-2. Coming into this weekend, Baylor had one away win on the year. It came in Austin. And they're on the verge of a three-game away sweep. Their first Big 12 away series win has been secured in three years. Their last one came 2021 at Texas Tech. So they've already won the series looking for the sweep. Double-digit runs now in seven of the last eight games. Rue, I think, has a pitch comm issue. He's going to come to the line. And yeah, this is a wristband pitch comm issue. He and pitching coach James Leverton out to tap on the wristband and see if they can get that display working properly. BYU's recently gone to a headband receiver, head, uh, receiver speaker pitch comm system, in which case everyone receives a recorded command as to what the pitch will be for the BYU side. The batter is Herdsman. The count is 0-2. Two Two are gone. One is on. Cooper Vest at first. Down and in for ball one. 17-5. Baylor leading at bottom five. 17 runs on 17 hits. BYU also equal with its hits and runs at five. The Cougs have the game's lone two errors. That nearly hit Breiker and did it. Yep, it did. Clipped him inside. So first and second for Brock Watkins now. Vest goes to second. Brock with 12 home runs on his career. Nothing yet this year. Got his first base hit since coming back into activity after a month away due to injury. Brock is one for two today. Drew McChesney will pinch run for Breiker Herzman. McChesney may indeed just go to center 
on a defensive replacement as well. So Crew McChesney in to pinch run for Breiker here in the fifth. Brock Watkins, the right-handed batter against the lefty R.J. Rue, who kicks and deals and misses away for ball one. 88-mile-per-hour fastball from Rue, missing away. The 1-0. Turned on and grounded just foul down the third baseline, gloved by the third baseman to Plansky, but just foul for one and one. Cade Fletcher's gone into left field. Place of Wesley Jordan took his spa- uh, spot in the order. And on defense. The 1 1. Base hit to the opposite field. And a hold at third for Vest. Bases will be loaded for Crew Robinson. So Watkins with his second consecutive single goes to right field for it. Vest to third. McChesney to second. Bases are loaded now for Crew Robinson, the nine hole hitter. And a mound conference with catcher, third baseman, and pitcher R.J. Rue. BYU down 12 at 17 to 5. Again, if they can close this to within single digits, this game will not be run ruled after seven. They can close the gap by that time. 17 5 Bears, 17 runs, 17 hits. BYU five runs now, six hits. Bases loaded for BYU. BYU has a bases loaded hit today. Cooper Vest triple cleared the bases in the third. And BYU as a team is now 15 for 48 over 300. The base is loaded. One and one the count to Crew. Robinson Crew today striking out swinging both times in the third and fourth. He bats now in the fifth. the score. Took the barrel off the shoulder. It's called strike one and two, so now Cruz in a hole. The one run in this inning, courtesy of an Easton Jones solo home run to lead off the fifth. Parker Goff flied out. Cooper Vest walked. Cujillo Loy struck out. McChesney hit by a pitch, and now Watkins singles for bases loaded. That's away. Well caught there by Castle to keep it in the glove. Two balls, two strikes, two out, three aboard. BYU down 12, 17 to 5. Crew has four home runs on the year, 11 for his career. Lefty lefty matchup and a backward K, the punch out, barrel on the shoulder, and Baylor gets out of a bases loaded jam. And Crew Robinson strikes out for the third time in three plate appearances. For BYU, one run on two hits, no errors, three left aboard. We go top six, Baylor 17, BYU 5 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Top six here in Provo, and it's a PZ Printing pitching change presented by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print for BYU. Fifth pitcher of the day, number 25, Luke Sterner, the right-hander, comes into the game. Luke making his seventh appearance. He started three games on the year. A 10.97 ERA, batters hitting 237 against Luke. Ten and two-thirds on the year. He's given up nine hits in those ten plus. Thirteen hits. Rather, nine hits, 13 runs. All earned. Has struck out nine and walked 12. So more walks than strikeouts. Of the nine hits allowed, five have been for extra bases. Two doubles and three homers allowed by Sterner. Sterner enters and faces... Daniel Altman. Altman, first pitch he sees, lifts it to opposite field and caught on the track by Riker Scow. Nicely laid, reaching out that gloved left hand and snagging it on the warning track. On the run, nice play by Scow. Scow tends to make nice plays out there in left field. And it does appear that Crew McChesney has taken... 
Riker Herdsman spot in center. Indeed, all kinds of outfield shifting today between the injury to Keone Painter and the pinch running from McChesney. I think Anderson's still out there in right. Yep. 0-1, meantime, to Hunter Toplansky. Swinging away by Toplansky. Got his first hit in the series in the fifth. He was 0 for 11 to that point. An RBI single making him 1 for 12. Two strikeouts today and four for the series. He has 36 strikeouts on the year to lead Baylor. Turned on that and pulled it well foul and well deep down the right field line. One ball, two strikes to Toplansky. Zach Mazok is on deck. 17-5 Baylor, top six. One ball, two strikes, two to Plansky. High for ball two. Fastball up top from Sterner. The book on Luke, three pitches. Fastball curve and change. Fastball low 90s. That's 89 up top for ball three. Three and two, count full. No one on and one gone. Top six, 17-5 Bears. Curve in the mid-70s and a change in the high 70s, low 80s for Luke. That's fastball down the groove, and it's swung on and missed. Out number two. First two retired for Baylor here in the sixth. And Toplansky's down on strikes for the fifth time in the series. And 37th time on the year to pace the Bears in that category. Zach Mazok. One for four today with a run scored on an RBI. Takes ball one. Sterner working third base side of the rubber. Comes set and delivers. Low. Ball two. Baylor setting new season highs for BYU in runs and hits allowed by the Cougars. 17 in both categories. That's in tight and missing for ball three. A 3-0 three count from Sterner to Mazok. Mazok the DH. Left-handed hitter in a left-handed hitting heavy lineup for head coach Mitch Thompson. Thompson in his third year at Baylor. Trent Pratt in his third year with BYU. A second year for Thompson, pardon me. Second for Mitch and third for Trent, and that's strike one. Fastball outside, catching the edge. Three and one count. Thompson 35 and 53. Trent Pratt 54 and 54. So right back at 500 is Pratt for his career. The 3 1. And that's striped to the opposite field. Gets down in front of Scal for a two out single. Mazok's got his second hit of the day and singles in consecutive plate appearances. Cole Posey will now bat. Posey is two for four today with two runs scored, two doubles, and an RBI. And Posey for the weekend, now seven hits in 11 at-bats. Seven runs and four RBI. Loading up the line score. 1-0 delivery from Luke Sterner. Kuhn, Mabius, Foss, Dally, and Sterner pitchers used today for BYU, the 1-0. And that will be in front of Crew McChesney. Gets down. He tried to catch it on the slide. Couldn't come up with it. They've now got a runner in a rundown. That's Posey caught between first and second. Vest to second for the tag by Watkins, and that'll do it. So... Posey with the base hit as McChesney slid to it, couldn't get it. And as it rolled away, they caught Posey between first and second. It is hit number 18 on the day. And that ties the number of the ties the season high for hits for Baylor. They've already got the tie for season high in runs. 17-5, Baylor we go bottom six on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
pitcher for Baylor, Steven Sepulveda, right-hander, entering the game in the bottom of the sixth. Baylor with an eight, a 17 to five lead, actually 18 to five. So on the rundown, runner did score and does count. Baylor did play to run on a hit in the uh, sixth. Mazok did cross the plate before Posey was caught in that run down and out. So make it an 18th run on a 19th hit for Baylor. And now it's 18 to 5, heading to the bottom of the sixth. So Baylor leading by 13. If they lead by 10 or more through 7, this game will be run ruled. BYU's Luke Anderson leads off the Cougar sixth. A healthy swing and over top of strike one. 91 from Sepulveda, the new pitcher for the Bears. Making his 12th appearance all out of the pan, a 6.88 ERA. 1-0 record on the year for Sepulveda. He's gone 17 innings coming in two today. Hit Anderson, so puts the lead batter aboard here in the sixth. Cougars have had significant base path traffic, but just uh, six hits on the day. Sepulveda coming into the day, giving up 14 hits, 14 runs, all er- uh, 13 of them earned. 18 strikeouts, 13 walks. Batter sitting 215 against Sepulveda. Just hit his fourth batter of the year. Anderson to lead off the sixth. Riker Scow now batting right handed against the righty Sepulveda. Fastball low from Sepulveda for ball one. So 18-5, just recapping. Baylor scoring a run during a rundown in the sixth to end the inning. So Baylor scoring in all but the third innings today. 1-0 to Sepulveda. Rather, from Sepulveda to Scow. Scow checks and goes for strike one on the count. Steven Sepulveda. The third Baylor pitcher of the day. Started a righty, brought in a lefty, and now back to a right-hander. Anderson takes his lead off first. One ball, one strike. No one gone, one on, and takes away for ball two. The book on Sepulveda, fastball slider change. Fastball mid-90s when it's going. The 2-1. It was 91, just missing low. Oh, the delayed strike call on that one. I thought it was ball one. It was a strike two call. Two and two the count. No one out and one aboard here in the bottom of the sixth. 18 to five. Baylor leading it. 18 runs, 19 hits for the Bears. And BYU five runs, six hits. Two errors for BYU and Baylor errorless. They sit to center field for Riker Scow. First and second, no one out. Anderson to second. Is the Cook something going down here? Down 13. Looking to avoid this game being run ruled after seven. We're bottom six. Easton Jones will now bat in his last at bat. Solo home run, number nine on the year, 12 of his career. He leads BYU in season home runs and is the active roster leader, along with, I should amend that, second to vest with 15 career dingers. Watkins and Jones now each with 12. Breaking ball drops in nicely for strike one. Anderson on second. Scow on first. Scow an injury replacement for Keone Painter left after jamming his hand in the first base in the first inning. That's in the dirt for ball one. Low and away from the right-handed hitting Jones. Jones' hit streak is now eight games. His reach base streak is nine games. BYU's home runs leader on the year, adding his ninth. Back in the fifth inning. Tied for BYU in hits as well as he swings and gets a piece of strike two. Jones and Anderson both 37 hits apiece to share the lead. One ball, two strikes to Jones. In on the knees and backing away for ball two. 
Jones in the series. Four for 11. With a pair of extra base hits, a double, and today's home run. A 2-2. Foul back out of play. We hold it 2-2. Two and two. Baylor 12 and 1 leading after 6, BYU 0 and 14 trailing after 6 and BYU certain to be trailing after 6 today down 18 to 5 in the bottom of the 6th. Got him as Easton Jones turns and walks away. It's a backward K down the heart of the plate. Breaking ball gets him for out number 1 in inning number 6. So Easton strikes out for the second time today. Parker Goff, who came in for Colin Reuter in the fifth. The bat's now in the sixth. Parker flied out to center field in the fifth inning. One gone, two aboard. Anderson on second. Scow on first. Anderson reaching on an HBP. And Scow on a single. Breaker in for strike one. Sepulveda glancing back at second. And again, a breaking pitch drops into the bottom of the frame for strike two. So Sepulveda gets ahead of Parker Goff by an 0-2 count. Parker took Collins' spot behind the plate as well. 0-2 to Goff. A chase pitch away, 1-2. and two. Parker is BYU's on-base percentage leader on the year at 431. Not a ton of at-bats, but uh, does reach the minimum by a couple. One ball, two strikes. The wind whipping out to left center, as you can hear. BYU down 13. One gone here in the bottom of the sixth. Two aboard for Goff. Sepulveda from the stretch. Winds and fires, and another chase pitch away. And it was 95 missing outside. Two balls, two strikes. BYU and Utah Tech scheduled for Monday at 6 here at Miller Park. Then Oklahoma coming in next weekend. The 2-2 from Sepulveda. Breaking ball fisted off as Parker stays alive in the count. Just to fought that one off into foul territory down the right side. Just facing the Baylor dugout. Sepulveda, jersey number 14 on these attractive green and golds for Baylor. Green caps, green jerseys, white pants with green pins today, and then Baylor in block lettering across the chest. BYU in the royal blue Saturdays, jerseys with white pants. White and royal caps for the Cougs today. Two balls, two strikes, one out, two aboard in a 13-run ball game. Sepulveda. Gets Goff to lift into center field. It will get down in front of the right fielder. Apodaca will play it off a hop, and it will load the bases. So runners had to hold up a little bit to see if it would drop or not. It does in front of the right fielder, Apodaca, as it drifted away from right center, and the bases are loaded with one out. So Parker Goff burnishing his on-base percentage, which leads BYU. Anderson has to hold it third. Scow goes to second. Goff is at first with a single. BYU's second hit of the inning. And eighth hit of the day. Catcher Castle will converse with Sepulveda. Double play would get Baylor out of the sixth. And the Cougs have five outs to find at least four runs. If Baylor leads by 10 or more through 7, the game is over and run ruled. Cooper Vest bats and takes ball one low. Coop is one for one today with a three RBI triple. A bases loaded triple in the third. He bats now with the bases loaded in the sixth. Coop one for two with the bases loaded this year. With that one hit in the third of this game. The 1-0. 2-0 to Coop. Right-hander up in the Baylor pen. 
Andrew Petrowski. 2 0 to Vest. That's a swing from the heels and a miss through strike one. 93 miles per hour down the heart, and he blew it past him. Anderson on third, Paint, uh, Scow on second, Goff on first. The sacks are stacked for Vest, one out. BYU down 18 to 5. Coop fouls back out of play two and two. The Cougars could get out of the run rule with one swing of the bat here from Cooper Vest, who has seven home runs on the year and 15 for his career. Those 15 home runs lead active roster players. Two balls, two strikes, one out, three aboard. Righty on the hill, lefty in the box. Kick and fire from Sepulveda. And just missed outside. Fastball at 94 away. Now he's got to make a pitch or risk walking in a run. Great count for Coop. 3-2. One gone, three aboard. BYU down big but looking to hang in. Base it up the middle. Scores Anderson from third. Scores Scow from second. Sliding into third is Goff. Overthrow. It'll bounce off the dugout netting and make it second and third as advancing on the play is Vest. 18 to 7. BYU makes it an 11-run ball game. So for Coop today, 5 RBI. On a triple in the third and a single in the sixth, Anderson scores. Scow scores, and holding it third is Parker Goff. Runners on the corners now, and one gone in a mound visit. The Bears, whose lead has gone from 13 to 11. The Cougars still in run rule territory, but looking to get out of it. Visit from pitching coach James Leverton. Cooper Vest with a single officially, and then took second on the overthrow to third. Two RBIs for Coop on the play. And five on the day. And Sepulveda will be pulled from this game. So we'll take a 60-second break for a Baylor pitching change on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. New Baylor pitcher is number 18, Andrew Petrowski. Right-hander coming into the game, making his 14th appearance of the year. He's second on the team in appearances. Has one start on the year. 6.75 ERA. Petrowski's gone 14 and two-thirds coming in two today. 16 hits allowed, 12 runs, 11 of them earned. Has struck out 11, walked 11. Batter sitting 276 against Petrowski. He's given up six extra base hits. Among his 16 hits allowed, three doubles, three home runs. He enters a game that Baylor leads by 11, but has led by as many as 13 until moments ago when Cooper Vest drove home two to make it an 11-run ball game at 18-7. The run rule is in play. Baylor leads by 11 now. If they lead by 10 or more through seven, the game will be over. The Cougs looking to take this one into at least the eighth inning. As we come back in, it'll be Cooper Vest on second, Parker Goff on third, and Kuhio Aloy due up for BYU. Let's explore the Big 12 scoreboard brought to you by Explore Utah Valley. Enjoy Utah Valley's food scene in downtown Provo where 50-plus local restaurants provide a wide variety of food experiences. Find your happy here. Learn more at utahvalley.com. At TCU, bottom six, Horned Frogs leading Texas Tech 3-2. Bottom six in Morgantown, West Virginia 4 and UCF 3. Bottom second in Norman, K-State and OU are scoreless. Those are the games underway in league. Petrowski to face Aloy with two aboard and ball one from Petrowski. Later, Cincy at Oklahoma State, Texas at Houston. In non-conference play, KU leading Pacific 9-3, bottom eight in Lawrence. And a called strike on the outside edge from the right-hander, Petrowski. Fastball at 93, bites the zone and one and one the count. Softball lost 7-3 at number two Oklahoma, so BYU took one of three against the number two team in the country, winning 9-4 yesterday. 
Sooners 7, Cougars 3, the final today at OU. The 1-1 up top and in tight, and 2-1 and the count to Kuhio Aloy. 18-7 Bears. Baylor ties its, or sets its season high in both runs and hits today with 18 and 19 respectively. Low for 3-1. and one. Fastball missing below the frame. Previous high in runs was 17. They have 18. Previous high in hits was 18. They have 19. So season highs set today for Baylor. And season highs in hits and runs allowed by BYU as well. That'll get down in right center. It'll bring home one run and bring home two as it's misplayed by Apodaca. 18-9 and BYU's out of the run rule. With a four-run sixth so far, Kuhio Aloy with a single to right, scoring our Goff and Vest. And this may be a longer day than seven innings after all. Kuhio Aloy drives in two. And his third of the day. RBI double in the third, and now a two-RBI single in the sixth. The Cougs have had a pair of four-run innings. Still trail big 18-9. to nine. If Baylor wants to run rule BYU, they'll have to get more runs to do it. 18 won't do it in this one. That's Crew McChesney to center field. That's deep to left center. Off the base of the wall. Kuhio Aloy coming around third. Crew McChesney motoring into third. That's a stand-up triple. So for Crew McChesney, RBI triple. 18 to 10. BYU's hanging around. Scores Aloy all the way from first. Brock Watkins will now bat. Watkins grounds to second, playing in the hole, low throw. Got him at first, but scoring on the play is McChesney for out number two. An RBI ground out for Watkins, but on a 18-11 score now, so the run rule well out of play now. And Crew Robinson out of the nine hole has struck out three times in three plate appearances. So McChesney scores on the Watkins ground out. A five-run sixth for BYU. A sixth-run sixth, beg your pardon. Six runs crossing after BYU went down 18-5. to five, Taking the run rule right out of play for the time being. That's opposite field from Crew. Deep to left. Left fielder back and on the track. And that goes over his head. Fletcher plays it off the wall. And the extra base hits just keep on coming for BYU now. It's a stand-up double for Crew for his first hit of the day. And the Cougs have batted around here in the sixth. RBI double for Vest. RBI single for Vest, pardon me. RBI single for Aloy. Two RBIs in both. An RBI triple from McChesney. And now Watkins with an RBI ground out. Robinson follows with a two-out double. And now a runner in scoring position for Luke Anderson, who began the inning by being hit by a pitch and scoring. 0-1 to Luke. Tenth batter in the sixth inning. 0-2 as he swings and misses. This game is... Two hours and 40 minutes old, and we're not yet through six innings. Look for a while this might be a short day with a run rule. Doesn't look like it now. At 18 to 11. All low, one and two, the count. Riker Scow on deck. The one, two. Luke slaps in opposite field, but foul. Down the right field line. A six-run sixth after BYU went down 18-5. to five. Baylor could still find a way to run rule BYU, but it would take more Baylor batting in the top of the seventh to do it. 
And they've started to make some platoon substitutions on their roster. The one-two. And that's hammered by Luke Anderson, but right at the center fielder who dives to make the catch. Ty Johnson leans out and records the third out. But for BYU in the sixth inning, six runs on six hits. There were no there was an error and one left aboard. We go to the top of the seventh, 18-11, Baylor leading BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.